What's up guys, Axis here with the second part of my intro tutorial. Um, this is going to be the After Effects part obviously, and um, I wasn't originally going to do this, um, but I've kind of changed mindset on it all, and I've um, decided to make this, so um, all those people that were like Skyping me and inboxing me can stop now. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've, um, I've just kind of felt really good today, so I just wanted to make this tutorial. Um, so first of all, I mean first off, just open up a new composition with Control N, uh, and then I'm just going to do it on HDTV 720 at 25 frames per second at whatever resolution, obviously, is what you rendered in. If you rendered in 4K, <laughs> put it in that, um, and whatever duration, um, however many seconds you rendered. So I'm going to do Control I to import my footage now, and since I didn't save. Um, the footage from the last tutorial, the uh, Cinema 4D part, which you'll have in the description if you haven't seen it. Um, so I'm just going to be using the, uh, the intro that I based that tutorial on. So I think it's in here, hopefully I have all the um, files. So um, if you followed my last tutorial, you would have rendered in a PNG sequence. Um, but you might have rendered in like a movie or a mob, se uh, like a Quick time sequence. So just double click on your quick time sequence, but if it's like a image sequence, uh, click on the second picture, second frame, and then it will After Effects will create a image sequence for you. As you can see, that's it there. But I think I rendered this in 1080, so I think it's about like 68, yeah. And I just scaled it down to about 720 there. As you can see, it's pretty plain right now. But, um, right, first off, I'm going to add some blur. So, um, I'll have a link in the description to a plugin called um, Real Smart Motion Blur. It's a really awesome plugin, it adds motion blur where it would um, be like seen if it was actually filmed by a camera. So, um, yeah, basically, we're going to drop that onto the footage when. Um, the effects, yep, there we go. So, RSMB. And if you got the pro version, just drag that on to your footage. And I go on the uh, blur amount to 0.9, should just turn up the blur a bit. And as you can see now, if I just skim through it, that there's now a blur on there. Right. And um, I'm just going to add a background, so just a black null object, um, just a black solid, so just do Control Y and click OK to create a solid. I'll just call that BG. Um, so there we have the motion blur. And now I'm going to add some smoke. Normally I'd um, create something in particular, which is another plugin, but I've actually made some pre made, well, I've done some pre made smoke. So if I just go and get my stocks. I can grab some smoke that I pre-made and it should just load in there and then I'm going to drag this from the project on top of the footage and right click go to blending mode and screen and there as you can see you can now see through the black basically what changing the blending mode does is it um, gets rid of the black so you can it's kind of transparent see if I put it on normal and turn the opacity back up it's gone but if I put it on the screen you you can see right through it so I'm going to press T on the footage to bring down the opacity like that and then I might actually add a tint to make this blue so go into your effects and presets type in print uh, tint double click on tint make sure it's on to your smoke layer Click on the uh, map white too, and then change it to a blue color. You can maybe blend it with original if it doesn't if it doesn't look that good, or if you want it to um, look kind of more natural. So there we go, and it's kind of the scene's kind of looking a bit plain here. So um, at this point, this is when I added. Um, another plugin called Twitch 
which is from Video Copilot. They do some awesome plugins, they do optical flares, which you see in a lot of intros. Um, so yeah, just once you've, I'll leave a link for that in the description too. You just drag that on to your adjustment layer, which you can make by doing Control, Alt and Y. Go on to Enable, and I'm going to go to Slide, and maybe Blur. So as you can see, that adds some really crazy effects on there. I meant slide, not scale. And um, I don't actually want the. I'm going to turn down the amount to about ten. I'll just let's see how that looks. I'm going to scale up my background and also my smoke, so they don't go out frame. So as you can see now that it doesn't go out frame. Uh, and to bring up your scale, if you didn't know, just click on the layer and press S, which will bring up the scale option, if you didn't know. And as you can see, now there's a kind of shaking effect. Added to the scene. Um, and also it's a bit dark, so I'm going to actually add another plugin called Optical Flares. Um, these are just some really... Uh, these are really um, essential plugins I'd say for um, making an intro because I use them in most of them so once you've installed that I'll leave remember I'll just leave all the links in the description I'm gonna stop saying that now <laughs> um, so that will start loading up optical flares and for this you can either put this on screen or linear dodge and what linear dodge will do is it's quite different from um, screen We'll still get rid of the background, but it will kind of light the scene more as an effect rather than just the flare. See if I change it to screen. As you can see, it's kind of lowers down the light a bit, but if you put it on linear dodge, it brings out the colours a bit more. So I'm going to go into options of optical flares. Now, oh, there we go. So click on the this little arrow here, clear all click yes and if you've installed a bunch of presets which I have you can just choose one of these or you can make your own so I'm gonna click on glow just, um, and then maybe streak you can turn the um, scale or brightness up to your liking and then I might add a shimmer make it like really big but turned in the brightness there we go So that's quite nice and then once you do uh, once you've done that as you press ok go on to your solid click on optical flares and click on the little pointer there bring it to the side and as you can see we've now got a flare <laughs> so um, then I'm just going to change the colour to match the scene A bit darker. So now, what I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the keyframe there. Go back to the start of your um your um intro. Press the keyframe. Click on the black object after you've pressed the keyframe, and then click U, which will bring up all your keyframes. and then I'm gonna go to the point where like all the text comes in I'm gonna kinda bring it up to about um, 20 and then you can right click and go to easy ease in which will create a smoother animation there and then from this point since I made a keyframe I'm gonna go forward until it hits maybe about here in fact just so there's a really quick pulse of light and then I'm going to put this up really high like that As, again I'm going to put it on easy ease, there's a shortcut for it shift F9 so there's a massive pulse and then you can, I'm going to go a couple frames forward so 1, 2, 3, 4 put it down to about 100 also if, um, to add a bit more kind of life to your animation go into your optical flares and flicker and I'll 
I'm going to go with 15 for the speed and amount. I'm just going to scale that up so it doesn't leave the scene when the twitch is happening. At this point it's kind of slow and I really want it to be like a massive impact so I'm gonna go and click my original footage, go to time, enable time remapping and as you can see it's gonna bring up a little menu and when you uh, get to the point where your text is just uh, coming in click that keyframe, go towards when the impact happens which is here for me, click it and then drag it back which will speed your animation up. Like that. But now my um <laughs> my optical flares is all offset so I'm just gonna move that back so the keyframes match my optical flares. There. Looks nice. And at this point, you could even add a blur. So go back onto your adjustment layer, type in Gaussian blur, double click on it, and then at the point where your text is coming in, I'm going to click on blurriness. Uh, again, I'm going to open up my keyframes with U, go to the point of impact. I'm just going to put this up. To, yep, seven. And then you can make this kind of like fade out over time. As you can see, that's quite a nice effect there. Um, and also, you could add the lens effect for this impact. So, type in lens for CC lens, drag it into your um, adjustment layer. It's a really weird effect. What you want to do is drag the size out until it's just um until it's like there's no black borders anymore like that and I'm gonna go to the point of the impact here click the size keyframe I'm gonna, um, gonna reopen the um, keyframes because it has to refresh them with you and um, at this point I'm going to go to the size and turn up to 500 So as you can see, it's normal, and then it goes into the kind of lens thing. And I'm going to go about four seconds, four frames forward, and turn this back up to 500. So you can see it just adds to the impact there. And um. Lastly, I think I'm going to add a color correction. Um, you could either use some of the built-in like curves and stuff that are built into After Effects, or um, what I use is Magic Bullet. It's another pl plugin. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so Magic. Uh, I'm just going to go into the Effects tab because I've actually forgotten. <laughs> Um, effects, um, looks, oh wait, there we go, it's called looks, and just drag that onto your adjustment layer, click edit, and that will bring up a whole new window, and um, as you can see I've already got some presets that I've downloaded from a couple people. Um, but I don't normally use them, I just normally go into the tools and I'll grab a curves and I'll put it in the post and then on these, this R RGB tab, turn down the darks or blacks and raise up the like highlights and I might either like turn down the blue, I don't know yeah but maybe not that much so um, as you can see it's um, just red, green and blue, so you can like change how much green you've got in there. 
and how much blue red yeah that's basically what it does um, and also if you wanted to completely change the color you could go into the post tab and drag in a hue and saturation sometimes this looks a bit weird though if you've got like a really heavy saturation already it can look a bit grainy but this doesn't look too bad see I can turn it to green and then I'll turn down the saturation because it's a bit harsh and then there you go change the color um, and this is kind of like a 3D effect which is also on post and then normally what I do is I turn up the red um, and cyan uh, and then turn down the green it creates like a popping out 3D effect and you could also add pop if you wanted it's also a really nice one might not be with this one but oh it's quite nice actually um, so yeah it's just mess around with these effects really until you get a good colour correction I'm going to add, if you go into lens and a vignette uh, vignettes are really good, I use them most of them, just to kind of like darken off the edges you could also do this with a light in Cinema 4, I mean um, in uh, After Effects but I'm just going to use that there um, and also edge softness is a nice one which is basically like a blur inside of uh, Magic Bullet and then normally turn the quality up as you can see that blurs the edges slightly and if I brought this over I could just blur the whole thing so um, yeah that's basically the gist of um, uh, doing colour correction and everything so yeah that's, that's looking pretty good and now that we've got that just go to the point that it ends and press N and then right click on there and then click trim to comp work area and then what you're going to want to do is uh, go and render this so um, I've actually forgotten how to do this like from the menus because I have only been using the shortcut so yeah just do um, yeah just render it and what I normally do is I go to Windows Movie, Windows Media, which is a WMV format. Obviously, you may want to do QuickTime if you're on a Mac. And then, by default, these will all be really far down. So go into Format Options, click on um, Advanced Profile, and turn the max bitrate and the image quality up to f max. Press OK, and press OK again and then you can go and save it wherever you want so um, thanks for watching guys um, comment uh, for new tutorials and everything um, uh, thanks for watching see you guys next time